Tell us your name and tell us about your project. My name is Sir Arthur Eddington and my project was the first experimental test of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. I performed this experiment by photographing a solar eclipse and proving that light bends around the sun. Einstein's theory was the successor of Newton's law of universal gravity, and he developed it because he believed that space and time are relative and that gravitational fields would cause warps in space-time, thus weaving gravity into the continuum. This idea, however, was in conflict with Newton's law, so an experiment was required to prove it. We measured the positions of stars in January and February, and then in the following May of 1919. We observed them during the solar eclipse and compared them to their original positions to see what we could find. What were you guys trying to do or find? We were trying to prove Einstein's theory of relativity correct. One facet of this theory is that light should not travel in a perfectly straight line. Essentially, as light travels through space-time and nears the warp induced by an object's gravitational field, the light should curve. Newtonian physics also predicted light would bend due to gravity, but Einstein's theory predicted that it would bend twice as much. Such a tiny difference seems impossible to measure on Earth, but the solar eclipse made it possible because we were able to observe the light from the stars would have passed through the sun's gravitational field on its way to Earth due to the darkness of the eclipse. In doing this, we were trying to prove that the light would bend at the rate Einstein predicted, therefore lending credibility to his theory of relativity. Where did the project or experiment occur? I viewed the star's positions before and during the eclipse on a remote island of Principe, which is in the Gulf of Guinea off the west coast of Africa. I also had a team of astronomers stationed in Sobral, Brazil, in case the clouds blocked the view of the eclipse in either location. Locations in South America and Africa had the longest viewing time, so these areas were perfect for observing. What other significant events were happening around the world at that time? In the beginning of the century, around 1905, Einstein had his breakthrough in his theory of relativity, so the ideas were still very new and had not, not yet garnered much attention in 1919 during our experiment. Also, this experiment occurred during the beginning of 1919, when World War I had only just ended a couple months prior at the end of 1918. The world was still recovering, but with a new productivity and excitement for scientific exploration, it was the perfect time for the experiment to occur. Who else was involved in the project? The person who deserves the credit for the creation of the idea of the project is Sir Frank Watson Dyson, an astronomer royal of Britain. Two years prior, in 1917, he concocted the perfect experiment to observe the light on Earth and prove Einstein's theory. He knew of the total solar eclipse that would occur in May 29, 1919, as the sun would cross the bright Hyde star cluster, and he knew that the light from the stars passing through the sun's gravitational field would be visible in the darkness of the eclipse, which would allow us to record accurate measurements of the star's positions in the sky after being shifted by gravity. Sir Frank Watson Dyson came up with this experiment, and then two years later, I led the experiment. I also had another team of astronomers helping me record measurements in Brazil at the time of the eclipse. What was your role in the project? My role in the project was to lead the experiment and carry out Sir Frank Watson Dyson's plans. I first measured the true positions of the stars during January and February of 1919. In May, I measured the stars' positions during the eclipse in Principe. I took several pictures during the six minutes of total eclipse. Afterwards, I returned to England and my data confirmed Einstein's predictions and gave his theory attention and relevance in the scientific community. What impact did your project have on the physics community? In addition to shining a light on Einstein's theory and gaining him notoriety, the groundbreaking experiment also had a significant impact on the physics community. The concept of gravitational lensing has now emerged as a result, which deals with the bending of light around massive objects. This idea has become a very important tool in astrophysics. Additionally, physicists now use gravitational lensing to try to understand dark matter and the expansion of the universe. What were the obstacles that had to be overcome for your success? Truthfully, astronomers had been trying to observe the light in a solar eclipse since before Einstein had even finished formulating his theory, but nature and politics frequently intervene. World War I saw the arrest of many astronomers trying to observe eclipses as they were mistaken for spies. In many other attempts, they were camera issues, rain, clouds, or too much darkness. All in all, I am very thankful that our experiment was successful in every way.